top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps a giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah Hi there, it's Ann Perry. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about karmic debts, specifically the karmic debt number 13-4, and especially how it applies to the master number 11. How does a 13-4 karmic debt affect the master number 11? Let's go find out. Okay, let's talk about karmic debts and find out exactly what that means. So karmic numbers um, include the numbers 13, 14, 16, and 19. So today we're talking about the number 13. So the karmic debt can also be referred to as a testing number, a warning number, or even a hidden number. But I'm going to tell you something. My life path number is 16, 7. And trust me when I tell you, I know that that's a karmic debt and I know that it's at play in my life. So I have no doubt that if you have a 13 for someone in your, somewhere in your chart, once you understand it, you're going to know that it's there. So basically the karmic debt number indicates that you have a debt to pay in this lifetime for the actions that you performed in a previous lifetime. So you're a bit of a badass in a previous lifetime. So this time we're going to kick it forward and we're going to take care of some of that debt in this lifetime. So when you choose to see one of these numbers show up um, as one of your core numbers in your chart, it's a message that you're working with issues from the past. It also indicates that you're an old soul, but you already knew that because you're a master number 11. So the master number 11s are old souls. They wouldn't have been given the opportunity to work on the 11 energy this time around had they not walked on previous lifetimes. So we know that the 13 for karmic debt is sort of exemplifying that and you're kind of like, go big or stay home. If I'm going to come back in as the 11, I might as well bring back some karmic debt to work on as well, right? Ah, careful what you uh, sign, which co documents you sign next time. <laughs> Dot those I's and cross those T's better. Um, but the karmic debts hold more of a punch than what the karmic lessons do. So the karmic lessons come from um, examining your full name on your birth certificate and then figuring out which letters are missing from your full birth name. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about specific karmic debts. I'm going to do a series of four of them so you'll understand where each one fits with the 11s. But in this particular case, we're only just, just talking about the number 13. So where can a karmic debt show up in your chart? So it can show up in a few places. The expression number for one. This is where we show our talents and our gifts. And we get our expression number from calculating the full birth name on your birth certificate. So we're assigning numeric value to each letter in your birth name. We'll show you a little bit more about that here in a minute. Uh, we can see it in a heart's desire number. We can see in the heart's desire number we see passions, but the karmic debt can also show up in there. So it's calculated from the vowels of your birth name, which is also shown on your birth certificate. It can show up in your birth day number, the actual day that you were born. If you were born on the 13th day, yep, you brought it with you. The 13-4 karmic debt is yours. Uh, it can also show up in cycles, various cycles um, in your life as well. For example, one being is the essences, which are cycles that affect you and tell me how exactly you're going to be going through that personal year. You know, we go through that nine personal year or nine cycles and each personal year has a different theme to it. Well, the essence, which comes from your birth name, tells me how are you specifically going to go through that year. And it could be a 13-4 as a karmic debt, which is part of the essence, which is part of the cycle. So here's an example of a karmic debt in a master number 11's chart. Um, we're looking at the expression number here. All letters are calculated when we're looking at the expression number. So let's take a look at the first name, Jack. Okay, so we know that J vibrates at the vibration of the number 1. The A vi vibrates at the number 1. The C vibrates at the number 3. And the K vibrates at the number 2. Add those all together, it comes to 7. Leave that alone. Okay, that's the first name. We're going to leave it alone. If you'd had a bunch of middle names, we'd break those down separately too. But in this case, I had to come up with something creative that would come up to a 13-4. So work with me here. <laughs> so the last name in this case is the best I could do. It's lab. Okay, so 3 for L, 1 for A, 2 for B equals 6. 7 and 6 equals 13-4. You got it, right? So the expression number is the totality of all of the letters in the birth name. And in this particular case, Jack Lab's name came up with a 13-4 karmic debt associated with the expression number. We can also look at the heart's desire number, which was uh, is when we're only looking at the vowels of the birth name. So in this case, Anne Berku, Berku. don't laugh, I had to come up with something clever. <laughs> okay, so Anne, the only vowel in the name Anne is A, and that's worth one. Berku, we've got two vowels, the one, or sorry, the I here is for nine, the U is for three. So nine and three. Um, 1 plus 9 plus 3 equals 13. Simple math, right? <laughs> okay. 
Oh my God, Mercury, knock it off. You're giving me a hard time today. Uh, day of birth, if it shows up in, in your day of birth, the 13th day, if you're born on the 13th day, sure enough, you brought the karmic debt with you. Okay, karmic debt 13.4, what does this actually mean? So those with the 13 karmic debt might experience a lot of frustration and they're going to have to work very hard to accomplish any task. Think of it as a consequence for a previous lifetime dominated by laziness, taking advantage of others, and similar bad choices. So this means that you were lazy in a previous lifetime. You didn't apply yourself. You let everybody else carry the weight. You might have taken all the credit for it. You didn't really like to work so much. You hid out in the kitchen and ate all the donuts while the guys were all, you know, working their butts off trying to carry the weight for you. Um, obstacles arise for those with a 13 uh, karmic debt and have to be overcome time and time again. Part of the reason for that is that when we look at the 13, we also have to look at the four. Okay, the four causes us to be able to focus really, really well. Unfortunately, when we have the 13-4 at play, sometimes the four says they're focusing on all the things that are wrong in your world, okay? I don't have time. I don't have energy. I don't have money. I don't have support. I don't have the education. Wah, 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 whatever, right? So when we've got this 13-4 at play, we have to make sure that we're always staying on the positive side of life rather than focusing on the negative side of life. So if you keep focusing on the obstacles that you run into, guess what? You're going to get a whole lot more because anything we give our attention, energy, and focus to is going to get bigger. So the key to the overcoming this 13-4 karmic debt is focus. The three in here doesn't really allow for too much focus, right? The three tends to have us be a little bit scattered all over the place. So the trick is to learn how to focus. The one is all about you. That's you being the individual and having the courage um, and the confidence to be able to um, express yourself in such a way that you can get things done, that you can develop a plan, that you can... Uh, develop a foundation for yourself. Remember when we think about the number four, you've heard me say it a hundred times, the number four is four posts into the ground. Practical, logical, realistic, you know, it, very grounded kind of thing. So the three doesn't really lend itself to grounding. But remember the numbers to the left of the slash, those are our sub lessons, right? So these are what we have to learn so that we can be the best four we can be. So the key to succeeding with the 13 karmic debt is all about focus. The temptation with the 13-4 is to take shortcuts, okay? That's that lazy side that's, oh, I can get it done quicker. I don't have to, you know, put in all the time and the effort. But too often, success doesn't come and it causes regret and it causes the 13-4 influence to give up. So how does this directly affect the 11s? How does the 13-4 affect the 11s? Well, the 11s with the karmic debt of 13 might experience a lot of frustration due to their inherent need to accomplish something now, right? The 11s are on a timeline. They're like looking at their watch going, come on, come on already. I got things to do, right? I got big things to do. They said I was supposed to come and do something amazing. I don't really know what it is. And now you throw in this karmic debt. Guess what, guys? You chose to bring it forward. You were a badass in a previous lifetime. You're paying back. It's not their fault. It's yours, right? So suck it up. Start working on it. Realize that this 13-4 um, relates to having to be focused, to be disciplined, to come up with a plan to accomplish the things that you want. The one in the 13-4 produces yet another need for confidence and independence. Guess what? The 11s? Mm -mm, double ones, right? You've got a double need to be confident, double need to be creative, double need to be the leader, double need to be, you know, effective in, in so many areas and to be authentic and real and genuine and being the creators. A lot of pressure on you guys because you've got double the need to have all that in place, right? So bring in the 13-4 and that one causes you to um, have yet another emphasis on um, learning how to be confident, learning how to be independent, learning how to be all those things that the 11 is trying to be. So the three creates the distraction, okay? The three over here, it creates the distraction and brings in a bigger need to learn how to express yourself, right? So 11 sometimes are a little on the shy side. You guys kind of like to be sort of you know, in, in the background, you don't like to put yourselves out there too much. It's a little bit of a risk, um, you might feel. So the three is challenging you to express yourself authentically, uh, genuinely, sincerely, sensitively on all levels. The four demands planning and process, which is a practical energy sometimes, but it's often hard for 11s to achieve. 11s are up here. Remember, you guys are getting all the ideas, um, all the inspirations, but sometimes you lack the ability to be able to um, focus on the, on the idea itself to be able to manifest and turn it into something, right? So um, this 13-4 demands process. It demands a plan. Well, if you know that, then come up with a plan, right? If you know that that's what it takes, 
uh, to allow you to be able to be successful, to be able to really reach your goals. Um, that's what you need is a plan. So you have to work hard to develop a plan. Stay focused on the plan. Uh, otherwise, you're going to waste a whole bunch of energy. The four can cause you to feel rigid and stubborn, which can stand in the way of you accomplishing your goals, right? If you are just hellbent for leather, you're not going to do it. You're, you know, you're just feeling stuck. You're focused way too much on the limitations and the obstacles. Guess what, guys? You're going to get a whole lot more of the same. So let's make sure that we are focusing on what's good in our lives rather than what isn't. So how can the 11 lessen the effects of this 13-4 karmic debt? One of the biggest things you can do for yourselves, regardless of whether you have a 13-4 karmic debt or not, but in particular in this case, practice living in the moment. It's going to relieve the stress about the future. If you can focus on the moment, the moment is the only thing that we have where we can actually execute change, where we can step into ourselves, we can step into our purpose, we can step into our into um, our passions, right? Right now, in the moment. If you keep putting it off because you don't feel good enough, smart enough, tall enough, young enough, old enough, whatever enough, then, you know, it, it causes you to be projecting into the future all the time. Listen, guys, the future doesn't exist. I know that sounds kind of bleak, but seriously, it doesn't exist. We can't touch it. We can't manipulate it. We can't change it. We can't do anything with it. The only place we can execute change is in the moment. So we need to work really hard at practicing living in the moment because then we don't, won't have to be worrying too much about the future. Live with an attitude of gratitude. Half full cup, always amen to that, okay? We always have to look at our lives through an attitude of gratitude. When we do that, life gets to be a heck of a lot better. Even when we have obstacles, I want you to look at the obstacles as the gifts and the opportunities, right? Um, I, I, I've been discovering with myself, the more I pay attention to the obstacle, the bigger the obstacle gets. If I quickly show gratitude for the obstacle, the obstacle disappears. Why? Because an obstacle is no longer an obstacle if you're grateful for it, right? It's, it's, it's just no longer an obstacle. It's pretty simple, isn't it? So just make sure that you're trying to show um, an attitude of gratitude, especially for the obstacles and the gifts um, that come from the obstacles. Because obstacles are not meant to be run into. Obstacles are meant to be gone over, okay? We're not supposed to hit them, run into them. We want to resist the temptation to take shortcuts on the way to your goals, okay? Remember, this is, that's what this 13-4 is all about. Have a tendency to kind of, um, have a, ten, a tendency to take the shortcuts so we can get there quicker. Sometimes the um, the 11s, given that you guys are also 2s, lack patience. So you're really meant to be learning how to be very patient with your 11 life path number. But the 13-4 is also demanding patience, attention to detail, focusing on what you are accomplishing rather than what you are not accomplishing. Okay? Breathe. Lose the tendency towards stubborn behavior. Life is not that serious, guys. Have some fun with it, right? Let it go, right? Just just to understand that this is a journey. This is not a destination that we're trying to reach, right? This is a journey. Get clear on your goals and develop a step-by-step -step action to get you there, okay? Really, that's very, very important. I find a lot of people who have the four influence in their charts um, have a need to have a plan. If they don't have a plan, they spiral around the drain all the time and they have a really hard time um, accomplishing anything. The other issue with the 13-4 energy or the four energy in general is that um, because of the ability to, to focus here, we tend to focus on all the things that are not right. I've talked about this before, but it's true. We focus too much on what's not right. We end up wearing the victim t-shirt. Nobody looks good in a victim t-shirt, right? You can't move from that. So you got to own your progress. You've got to own the obstacles. You've got to own the limitations. You've got to own how you feel about everything, right? You, you can choose to feel whatever way you want about anything and everything. So... Um, let's choose to overcome this karmic debt, shall we? Because otherwise, it's going to raise its head again for you in the next lifetime. Nobody wants that. That's it. Thanks so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to post them down below. You can contact me at annperrynumerologist.com. I have several reading opportunities available to you if you want to take advantage of having a one-on-one -on -one reading with me. I would love that. I also have some courses on unimi.com. I've got two Facebook groups. I've got one for just Ann Perry numerologist, Ann Perry professional numerologist. I've also got the master number 11 portal. If you haven't joined it, why not? It's a great place to hang out with 11s just like you. And last but not least, we have the master number 11.com membership. Okay. This is the coolest place ever. If you really want to get growing. Okay. This is where we, we produce a new video every single month, specific to the 11s, not available anywhere else. It won't be shown on YouTube. Um, it's $11 a month. That's like $2 and 75 cents a week. You got to check it out guys. Even if you join for a month and cancel, that's cool. I'm all right with that. 
but you need to check it out because I'm sure there'll be something in there that will really help you in your um, growing into your lovingness. All right. Thank you so much, guys. I hope that you'll subscribe. Thank you, Mercury, for making me stutter. Um, <laughs> we're struggling right now, guys. You know, only only an Aries would attempt to do this, uh, to do a video during a Mercury retrograde. But hey, that's who I am. So pushing forward. Hoping you guys are having a great day. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.